Hello and welcome to my tutorial on using the multi-targeting logic similar to Dark Souls and God of War. It's quite simple to actually do. We'll start by getting two puppets down. First one will be the one our player is using and the second one is the enemy that we're going to be using to demonstrate this. So first and foremost you're going to want to find the multi-targeting logic. Uh, multi-target. There it is. You're going to want to put that in your scene. Once you've got it here, open it up. Oops. Open it up. And you can take your targeting chip out as well as your player chip out. Delete that microchip. And you'll want to put the player chip inside of your player's microchip and hook up a button press to allow you to target things. Personally, I prefer using R3. That's in the second menu here of the controller setup, as that's most similar to both God of War and Dark Souls, so it's easy to keep in mind when targeting things. That's all you need to do for this. There are settings you can access in here if you would like. Simply in this microchip here. If you want a uh, reticle or crosshair, you can set this to be a number value and it will spawn in a um, crosshair on the player or the enemy rather when you're targeting them. So simply just one, two, or three are the default ones. You can modify those if you'd like within the um, microchip here in its own settings. All three are displayed with these. Simply just changing the text will change it to be whatever you'd like. So to set up the actual targeting chip, this is also quite simple. All you're going to do is place down a cube. Let's do it in stamp mode, actually. Place your targeting chip on the cube. And then just get out a follower. That's in the movers and output here, the follower gadget. Stick that on the side of your cube. The default run speed of a puppet is 5.4 meters per second. So have this set to 100% strength as well as damping. What we're going to have it do is follow this puppet around and stay within it. So we will get a tag out for it to follow. That's in the sensors and input right here. Scope into the puppet. Oh, scope into the puppet and just place it around the chest area. From there, we can grab the scene space transform from it. And that's what we're going to want to wire into our follower here. Not the power. Oops. Open up the menu for this and uh, yeah this is what we want apologies target position here so we put it into target position this means that we don't have to give the follower a tag to follow and we can have multiples of the tags in the level that have the same name without it conflicting if i were just to click play here you'd see that it would go and try and follow him but of course this cube is currently collidable, so it's going to push the uh, other puppet off. So we'll want to remove collidable. And then we can see that it goes into the body of the um, puppet, no problem. At this point we're going to want to modify the look at rotator. Typically what you're going to want to do is remove all the strength in the Y. This means that it will only turn to face in the X and Z at the player, and you won't get it so that the camera tilts up the closer you get to the enemy, as the look at rotator will start looking down, and then you're going to run into issues with that. This way, you'll only have it looking left or right. 
So now we're going to actually put it inside the um, enemy. So scope in with L1 and X while you're holding it. And place it about the middle of the body. And now we'll want to modify the camera pointer. So if you just select it, you can see this little thing here in the game space. You're going to want to place this around the middle of the body of the puppet. You can change this just through trial and error to get the look you want for your game. Not everybody's going to want the same thing. Personally, I think it should be facing down a little bit. The other thing you want to do is make sure that the yaw is actually set to zero. So this means that it's facing straight on and won't actually get um, a weird position. This is by far the most important thing. It needs to be 360 or zero, whichever. If it's off, that means that your camera will not be facing the right direction when you try to lock onto something. It'll mean that the camera pointer will face potentially the complete opposite direction. And instead of looking at the enemy, you're going to be looking at yourself away from the enemy. So make sure that this yaw setting in the camera pointer is set to zero. Now that that's done, you are essentially done setting things up. If I go into play mode and take control of this guy here, you can see that the cube does in fact follow me around. And if I press the right stick in, I will lock onto it. Obviously, the giant cube is a little bit uns unsightly, so you might want to scope in and make it invisible. If you want to see it again, just turn off preview invisibility in your show slash hide menu. Now that that's done, we have working targeting system. And you can just repeat this for as many as you have enemies. There are a lot of ways you can do this as well so that it's uh, really easy to use, set up and use. So for instance, if I were to get out a trigger zone, let's make it a cube. We can have it so only when you're within a room does it actually turn on. So if we say that there is a room here, and this is where all your enemies are going to be. You can simply have it look for the possessed controller sensor, which is you, the player. And then we take that input and hook it up to, hang on, we need to turn off the preview invisibility, the power. So the targeting chip now, once you're within this area, will turn on. The other thing we'll want to do is make sure that this wireless receiver which has its own zone as well, is set to scene because we're already controlling where it's going to be turned on with the um, trigger zone. It doesn't matter that this is set to scene. It'll only detect things that are currently turned on. Same with these other two wireless sensors here. Or receivers rather. The um, wireless um, transmitters already have a scene wide um, signal, it's just the receivers that need to be changed. So these three here. And make sure that you do that for any of your enemies within this area to make sure that it works properly. And to prove that it works, let's select this and we'll go into test mode. Uh, can we see this? So if you're outside the zone, you can see that it doesn't even turn to, or it does turn to face you still, it looks like. It's just spinning. If you walk into the zone though, it will snap to you. And you can then use right stick to aim at the enemy. Walking out of it will turn it off and you can look freely again. So you can use this to have a room set up with just those enemies in the room being able to um, be targeted by your player. And that is the simplest way to have this set up. There are a couple other neat things you can do, but 
I don't think they warrant explanation. Um, this is the most basic use case that you'll be doing with this and is very, very, very easy to set up now. The, that I've actually changed the logic. It was drastically harder before. If you have more questions, you can feel free to ask me on Twitter, uh, on YouTube, and I will try my best to respond or let you know how this works.